Hi, I'm Lynette and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me. It's a voiceover though. That, that part is a voiceover because these get ready videos for me seem to take a really long time. They're really long. This video is probably still going to be long anyway, but I thought maybe I could hurry it up if I did a voiceover. <laughs> So in the get ready with me, you'll see that I'm using some of the products that I picked up during my various hauls <laughs> and I will link some above if you missed any of them. <laughs> um, I did use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Walnut. This was the mini that I picked up um, during the Sephora sale, spring sale. And then one of the uh, cream cheeks out blushes from Fenty Beauty that I picked up from the Fenty Beauty sale. And I also used one of my new um, Pat, McGlo Pat McGloss, <laughs> Pat McGrath lip glosses that I picked up during the Bergdorf Goodman sale. <sighs> um, I also use the new Jolt, my new Jolt um, Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil that I picked up at the Sephora sale. And uh, the Bad Gal Bang, <laughs> the Bad Gal Bang Mascara from Benefit. This is Benefit, right? From Benefit. This was my second time using it. I have some thoughts about it. You will see how it applied and what it did to my lashes in the video. <laughs> and then my most recent acquisition that came just today is from Sephora. This I got after the sale because this shade was out of stock. This is the bronzer, the Sephora bronze. It's a matte bronzer. And this is in the shade Ibiza, which is the darkest shade. And that's what it looks like. So you'll see me use it for the first time in the video. And uh, stick around if you want to hear my thoughts about these products that I used many for the first time. Some, this is maybe my second time using them. Uh, many of them, this is my first time using it. So stick around after the get ready with me portion. I will um, tell you my thoughts. Uh, I do do this whole eye look in the video as well. And I used three palettes. Two are palettes that you have not seen on my channel before. These are two palettes palettes that I find myself having to force myself to use. <laughs> so one of them is the Exotic Peacock palette from Pinky Rose and the other one is from Ace Boutte, the Flare palette and you will see me use those in the video as well. So I used one shade out of the Flare palette and I used one shade out of the exotic peacock palette and then I used three shades out of the Too Faced Life's a Festival palette. Still loving this palette and I used a shade that I used the wrong shadow. I meant to use this shadow on my <laughs> the inner portion of the eye and ended up using this shadow. So the look actually came out looking very very similar to a look I recently posted using my colored rain singles. So if you don't have any colored rain singles and you have these palettes, <laughs> you could do a very similar look with them. So if you would like to see how this all came together and hear my thoughts on some of these new products, then keep on watching. I'm starting off the eye look with my P. Louise base in the shade Rumor 5 and I'm dotting it on because I'm trying not to use too much of it because you don't need a lot. And I'm blending it out um, using my Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush and I'm all the way from the brow all the way down to the lash line. Now I'm taking NYX Blame It On Midnight, my eyeshadow single. and. I'm going to use that to set this base, to set the whole eye, and this is going to help my eyeshadows blend more easily over top. Now I'm going into the Pinky Rose Exotic Peacock Palette, and I'm going to take the shade Risqué, and it's this matte, um, dirty, lime green with yellow <laughs> shade um which i really like it's it's a grungy shade 
and I'm going to uh, place that in my crease and high above my crease. I'm going to go into the palette multiple times to build this shade up, but as you will see, it does build and I'm able to get it to show up on my skin tone. And every shadow that I've used in this palette thus far, I think this was like my second time using it, have been really good. They perform really well. I don't I I guess it's the the color story that just makes it hard for me to reach for this palette, but every time I've used it thus far, it performs really nicely. So I really need to do better in terms of using it more. Now I'm going to go into the Ace Boutte Flare Palette, um, another palette that I have the same issues with. <laughs> and I'm going to take that shade Acorn, which is the really dark brown shade, really dark cool brown shade. And I'm going to place that on the outer V area. I'm going to tap it in first, build up the color um, by going back into the palette multiple times. And then I'm going to blend it up and into the crease uh, about halfway across the crease. And another palette that um, I think I've used this, yeah, my second time using it. And again, the shadows perform well. It's just something about the color story, I guess, just doesn't excite me. Now I'm going into the Too Faced Life's A Festival palette, a palette that does excite me. And I'm gonna take that shade Fireflies and on a damp brush, I'm gonna use all of the metallic shades on a damp brush. And I'm going to place that on the lid and yeah this is really pretty this this palette is full of metallic shimmer shades and quite a few of them are dual chrome and this is a pretty like olive olively green metallic shade and just really 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 nice so i'm going to put that over three quarters of my mobile eyelid And now I'm gonna take the shade Fun in the Sun and I'm gonna place that in the inner quarter of the lid and the crease. And I'm gonna connect it and blend it into that first shadow, that last shadow we put down. And then I came to the realization that this is not the shadow I meant to use. <laughs> I meant to use that shadow beaming. <laughs> That was the whole point of this eye look, to use beaming on the lid. Oh well. <laughs> but it came out nicely anyway. Going back in with Risqué just to blend out the edges of those metallic shades in the crease. Um, this is how it ended up looking so much like the Colored Rain um, look that I did because I used the wrong shade on, in the inner corner. But we must carry on and I'm just taking that brown shade again from the Ace Boutte palette. And I'm just gonna blend it into the lid and the crease again because you wanna make sure that these, I wanna make sure that these shadows all blend seamlessly together. Back in with NYX Blaming Out Midnight and that's gonna serve as my underbrow highlight. It's not much of a highlight highlighter, but this is what I like to do. And now I'm just cleaning up under the eye for anywhere I got out of bounds or any fallout, which was not a whole lot. This is why I prefer to do my eyes before my base makeup. Now I'm going to start in on the face and I'm going to begin with my Black Girl Sunscreen. And I think this was my first time using it because I used a lot. <laughs> but as you can see, um, it doesn't leave a white cast, <laughs> number one. And it's very emollient, so it's got moisturizing um, ingredients in it, so it's it leaves my face looking really shiny. Um, so when I wear this without makeup, I have to powder my face because I will look shiny. And now I'm going in with my Sephora Retractable Eyeliner Pencil in the shade Matte Black Brown. And I'm gonna first um, tight line with this liner and then I'm going to draw a line across my um, my lash line and I'm going to try to keep it as close to my lashes as possible because I don't really want much of a liner I just want to make my lashes look darker and a little fuller because I'm not going to be wearing false lashes today I'm going to be just using mascara so I just want to real tight line near my natural lash lashes 
and now I'm going in with my Dior show this is it's a volumizer a lash volumizer and because I'm not going in with false lashes I have to try to give my natural lashes which are very sparse and short as much help as possible <laughs> So this will help my mascara along. Now I'm going in with my Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas Primer. This $52 primer. And I think this was my first time using it because I used it way too much. You really only need one pump. I only need one pump. And that's all I use nowadays to do my whole face. And, you know, I hate to say it because this primer is $52. But I really like it. <laughs> I really... I really do like it <laughs> and it's just more convenient to use as a pump as opposed to in the pot which is the original form and now I'm going in with the benefit bad gal bang mascara and I'm I don't know if you're gonna be able to see all that this mascara is doing to my eyelashes because I don't have you zoomed up in far enough I don't think uh, my apologies for that but of course I made a mistake <laughs> <laughs> and dotted it right there on my skin um, I like the wand on this mascara because you can get it so thin it's thin enough to where you can get right there in the inner corners and and get all your lashes um, and it's you know it was very good at lengthening my lashes but I guess yeah I had too much <laughs> I usually wipe off my wand before I go in with a mascara to try to cut down on the clumping and I didn't do that with this one so now I'm taking an eyelash fan brush and just trying to separate the lashes that kind of got stuck together because I had too much product on the brush and then I went in with just yeah I don't know if you can tell but <laughs> this I mean it's just I don't know <laughs> So I went in with a spoolie with no product on it and I this is what I do when I try to try to get out any excess mascara any excess product um, that that that's clumping my lashes and then I waited for the mascara to dry before going in with a q-tip to just clean to clean up that little spot where I touched myself and now I'm going to take my cover effects Power Play Foundation in the shade G100 and my NARS Longwear Radiant Foundation in the shade Caracas. The NARS Foundation is my winter shade, the Cover FX Foundation is my summer shade, and I thought if I mixed them together I could get my right shade because I wasn't really quite my summer shade yet and I, I was in between shades, okay, I was in between seasonal seasons. <laughs> so I tried to mix them together and I didn't do a really good job. <laughs> So I came out looking a little more red, I think, a little too dark with my foundation, but it's okay. I don't think I went anywhere, so it's fine. And I'm just using a Colored Rain Damp um, Beauty Sponge to blend it all out. I mixed the two together on the back of my hand and went in with my fingers, and now I'm just blending it out um, with my sponge. And as you can see, um, this foundation mix gives some good coverage now I'm taking the Juvia's Place I am magic concealer in the shade 11 the number 11 and I don't usually apply my concealer like this I think on this day I was trying to use it as sort of a color corrector concealer I don't know <laughs> um, yeah I don't usually apply it like this because I try to cut down on building too many layers under my eye eyes because I have a lot of wrinkles but for whatever reason I did it like this I was trying something different today <laughs> and I did it like this and now I'm gonna go on top of that with the NARS radiant creamy concealer in the shade walnut this was supposed to help give me some brightening under the eye but it really wasn't that much different in color from the Juvia's Place concealer, so it really didn't give me the brightening effect that I was going for. I'm also going to place it there on my cupid's bow to try to get a little highlighting effect there too. So this didn't really work out the way I was hoping it would, but it's fine. Once again, I don't think I went anywhere, so. <laughs> and just again, blending that out with my sponge.
And now I'm going to set all of those areas that I concealed with my Pat McGrath under eye blurring setting powder. And you already know I love this powder. This is in the shade medium. I did buy it in deep and the deep is too deep. I mean, I can use it, but it doesn't give me any kind of brightening effect at like this shade, the medium shade does. Um, and it doesn't change the color of my foundation or my concealer. And so, yeah, I really like this uh, powder and I use it to set um, all those areas that I used concealer. Uh, even there on my forehead and down my nose, even though I didn't use concealer there because that powder gives me just a little slight brightening effect. I used it in those areas too. Now I'm going in with the Maybelline Fit Me powder in the shade Mocha. This is my summer shade. And I'm gonna use that to set my face. I'm gonna push that product in using my Sonia Kashuk powder brush. Uh, they no longer sell this brush. She's changed over to different brushes now. So she no longer offers this particular brush, which is a shame because it, it's a really nice brush. And now I'm going to take the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow Pomade in the shade Dark Brown. And I'm going to first use the spoolie to just comb out those five hairs that, uh, those five eyebrow hairs that I have. <laughs> and then I'm just going to um, just draw in my, my uh, brows because my brows are tattooed. So it's just a matter of going over it and doing the shape, creating the shape that I want with them, with it, with figuring out my eyebrow shape. <laughs> and it came out pretty well today, pretty quickly, which is um, not the usual case. This is the Sephora bronzed bronzer in the shade Ibiza. This is the darkest shade. And this was my first time using this bronzer and I was not ready. I wasn't ready. Did, did you see that pigmentation? <laughs> do you see that pigmentation? <laughs> yeah, a lot. A lot. You don't need a lot of this product. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, I just didn't learn. I was just not learning as I was going. <laughs> and I'm using a, a natural hair brush. This is a Royal and Lane Nickel, one of the Omnia brushes. So it picks up a lot of product. And thankfully, this um, bronzer does blend out nicely. But yeah, your girl went in. <laughs> way too much way too much so pigmented so if you are of a dark of a deeper skin tone um this bronzer i believe will work for you <laughs> as you can see pigmentation is a not a problem i went under my chin i don't i shouldn't have it it's a bronzer not a contour but <laughs> Yeah, I just had to uh, blend because I think this is a reason why I came out so red too. This is a Fenty Beauty Cream uh, Blush. This is in the shade Daiquiri Dip and it's a really pretty bright shade. But as you'll see, these, um, these cream blushes are sheer. So uh, you really needn't needn't worry about going in too much with this blush i mean you can just build it up to the desired um pigmentation that you want but yeah really no no risk of going too crazy with it because once you blend them out they really they get more sheer so i like to press it into the skin rather than swirl it because i apply it over powder and i find that it doesn't pick up my foundation or my powder and it doesn't apply patchy so yeah now i'm taking the becca dream sickle press shimmering skin perfector and this is my summer highlighter basically <laughs> 
basically it's the only highlighter i use in the summertime I'm, I'm using a milani highlighter brush to apply it on the tops of my cheekbones and in a c shape around my eye because that's the way i like to wear my highlighter and i'm gonna try and you know maybe change it up this summer with different highlighters <laughs> But I really like this highlight. It's kind of like an orangey champagne. I really, really like it. I'm going to highlight the tip of my nose and right there in the bridge. Um, and my Cupid's bow. I really shouldn't highlight the tip of my nose or that bridge there. But because the shape of my nose being what it is, I really shouldn't be bringing more attention to it. <laughs> but I like the look. What can I say? And then I go in with a sponge because, you know, I don't want it to be so obvious. Like in your face that I'm wearing highlighter on the tip of my nose so <laughs> I just blend that in with my damp sponge and now I'm going to take that first shade risque that we started off our eye look with and I'm going to place that in the inner half the beginning half the front half <laughs> of my lower lash line and I'm using a Sephora smudge brush to apply and blend it along the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go back into the flare palette and take that dark brown shade, that acorn shade, and blend it on the outer half of the lower lash line, making sure I blend these two shadows together because I want it to be a seamless blend between the two. And now I'm taking the Urban Decay uh, 24 7 glide on eye pencil and I'm going to place this this is the color jolt into the lower lash line and it took a, a bit of building um, to get it to really show up <laughs> and this is supposed to be I believe it was supposed to be a neon liner but it's it's not neon at all <laughs> not at all And now I'm taking Beaming, that's the color that I was supposed to be using all along. And I'm going to place that in the inner corner as my inner corner highlight. And that's why this look came out so similar to the Colored Rain single eyeshadow look that I did. Because I used the wrong eyeshadow on the lid. And these are the eyes completed. And even though I used the wrong shades, um, I like the way it came out. And now I'm going to set all of this work that I just did with my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. It's the only setting spray that I use <laughs> because it does the trick. And now I'm going to take my Burt's Bees Lip Balm in the mango flavored, my favorite. I always apply lip balm before applying any or reapplying any lip product. And now I'm just going to tap in those little spots those little droplets from my setting spray and I'm taking my um, chestnut lip liner I think this was a new one looks like I changed out my stubby one and <laughs> use my newer one and I'm going to outline my lips with that because that's what I do <laughs> all year long this chestnut lip liner is just so versatile in my opinion. And now I'm taking the Pat McGrath Lux Trans Lipstick in the shade Lust Angeles. And that's going to be my lip color. It's like a mauve brown. I've come to the realization that I like a mauve pinky brown lip. And I, I feel like my preference has changed in, in lipsticks because I used to love like wine and berry shades and now i wear a lot of pinky brown nude lips <laughs> and then i'm going to go over top of that with my pat mcgrath lust gloss in the shade wicked whisper and i don't know why the lighting got weird like this <laughs> but and yeah this lip combo is like a lip combo that i wear often using different lip glosses and lipsticks but i always pretty much come out with the same lip and this is the completed look, and I do like the way it came out. Okay, so this video is just gonna be long. There's just no way around it. Um, all right, let's start with the mascara. This mascara, um, I think it's a nice mascara. I just don't know that it's 
for me um, it does a great job of lengthening and separating my lashes but I had issues <laughs> I had issues with just how separated <laughs> they became and and my lashes are sparse so the fact that they're so much more defined using this mascara makes it that much more obvious that I don't have very many lashes <laughs> So, I, and I use this with my um, Dior volumizer, my, my eyelash volumizer, and that still didn't really give me the volume that I need to kind of mask the fact that I don't have a lot of lashes. So, but it's a nice mascara, and I'm going to keep using it because I just opened it as new, and so I'm going to use it up. But um, I would not repurchase. And then the, uh, the NARS Radiant creamy concealer it's a nice concealer I have it in the shade walnut and I don't feel like it gave me very much brightening today I applied my concealers in a way that I don't usually apply and I'm not sure I got confused today I don't know what I was doing today when applying my concealer to be honest with you <laughs> but I did find that this walnut shade wasn't very different from the Juvia's Place shade number 11 that I used first this is for concealing and this was supposed to brighten but I don't feel like I got a whole lot of brightening I mean I see a little bit but I don't know I I'm gonna have to use this in the way that I normally apply my concealers and then I'll have a better <laughs> I'll have a better um, feeling on how it's going to work but the concealer itself I like I think the coverage is fairly good um, I can still see some grayness I have really dark under eye circles but um, yeah so so far I'm liking it and the 24-7 uh, Urban Decay Glide Pencil I love this formula it's my favorite eyeliner formula but this color jolt is just not the jolt that I want um, you know it went on it applied very smoothly very easily as all Urban Decay eye pencils do but the color is just it's just not I was looking for some you know oomph but after swatching this I knew I wasn't gonna get it but yeah I guess if I build it up it will get a little brighter but it's still not as bright as I would want um, I still prefer my Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliner in the shade Freak much more than I do this one so you win some you lose some and then the Fenty cream blush in the shade daiquiri dip um, I like it I used it yesterday for the first time and also I failed to mention I used a new brush I used one of my copycat Paris tools brushes this is the G204 brush it's a knockoff of one of the Marc Jacobs brushes that I recently picked up in a haul video and this isn't my preferred brush I mean I use this one because it's clean <laughs> and it's short bristle and it's very dense but this isn't what I would normally use to apply this blush I would normally use this brush this is from Real Techniques and it's a dual fiber brush um, stippling brush and yeah so this is great for application this is what I normally use but it's dirty with a different cream blush color on it so I decided to use this one today and it did the job um, it's very as you know by now I'm sure these blushes are very sheer so just the one application gave me just a little bit of color um, but you definitely can build this up I definitely can build it up and to get more pigmentation if I wanted to but I don't know I'm a little afraid of doing that <laughs> afraid of doing that because I get really crazy with the blush really quickly so I don't want to do that but yeah um, I'm really like I said before I've been enjoying these cream blushes which is unusual for me because I don't normally use cream products this um, Sephora bronzed this matte bronzer I used for the first time today and wow you saw it in the video the pigmentation is crazy <laughs> um, but it's nice it's a little on the red side and as pigmented as it was because I went in way with way too much on this side with all over my face but definitely right right here with way too much but as you saw it blended out very nicely I mean I'm looking a little on the red side my whole face today is looking a little on the red side but like I don't feel like you can tell me in the comments below if I look like a clown but I don't feel like I do <laughs> 
I feel like it all blended out nicely and naturally and I love that it's matte and I really like the color it's I want to say let's let's do a comparison and just make the video longer how about that um, this is the full spectrum bronzer that I picked up last year from I think I got this from Amazon and so this is what the covergirl one looks like and this is what the Sephora one looks like and they're not too far off in terms of color this one it's a little darker and it's a little more red I'm gonna swatch it for you and I like this one as well um, but I don't know I kind of felt like the more that I add to it it becomes a little more red I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that I don't know if you're gonna be able to see either one of them <laughs> but and this one the Sephora one really because I'm putting on layers I'm gonna build up the cover girl too and it's really really building up so the Sephora one so this is the cover girl full spectrum and then this is the Sephora and I built up both and look how that that Sephora one builds up this is the Sephora and this is the cover girl and yeah I just they both have some redness in them but I feel like the Sephora has a little it just has a deeper bronze um, tone to it and yeah this is really nice and it only costs $18 I got it after the sale because it was out of stock during the sale but even at $18 at full price I don't think that's a lot to pay for a bronzer especially when a lot of these bronzers the Fenty bronzers $20 which I think is a good price I don't think that's a bad price at all and um, I don't know if they make this anymore so if you're looking for if you're a darker skinned woman you got a little more melanin um, I think this is going to be a really nice more affordable option for you and I also use the Pat McGrath Labs Lust Gloss in the shade Wicked Whisper for the first time I did a swatch video of all the glosses that I picked up during the Bergdorf Goodman sale in the event that you missed it I will link that here and this is more of a peachy pinky mauve um, lip gloss and I paired it with Los Angeles also from Pat McGrath her matte trend lipstick and I think that is it I am really hot so if I'm looking really glowy and dewy aka sweaty and oily it's because I am <laughs> so let me know down below if you picked up any of these products and what you think about them if you liked this video please give it a like and consider subscribing because I do makeup tutorials haul swatches and reviews here every Saturday I want to thank you for joining me today I hope to see you again next week until then bye bye